Zion Williamson might have been perfect, but he wasn't the story of why the Pelicans won over the weekend. I'll tell you why defense and smart team basketball says a lot about head coach Willie Green. It's the Monday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with you on this Monday, going to break down the Pelicans 2-0 weekend, beating the Miami Heat in kind of surprising fashion and then trouncing the Detroit Pistons here. And it was, while Zion was near perfect against the Pistons. The defense and just the smart team basketball are why they won these two games and why they look like a fearsome team, even without Brandon Ingram right now. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube where there's almost 10,000 Pelicans fans. It's going to be a fun end of the season. You don't want to miss anything. We are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Become an everyday and listen Monday through Friday. Today's episode of Lockdown Pelicans brought to you by Prize Picks. The easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. But sound a little off. I'm like fighting some flu like symptoms here. So this might be a little bit of a shorter show. It's why it's coming to you a little bit later on Sunday after the big win over the Pistons here. So I apologize if I need to drink some some tea here and, and things like that while I'm recording. Bear with me. Hopefully we'll be back. And a little bit better for the midweek stuff here because we got a lot to talk about and I'm excited about it. So let's dive into this, right? 2-0 over the weekend, beating the Miami Heat in the Detroit Pistons. So I'm going to start off by saying this, and we don't need to go into this anymore. The Pelicans are not better without Brandon Ingram. Don't even think that remotely not the case. It's nice to see a 2-0 weekend, but there's some caveats and some asterisks we can put on this. But the team was good. And the reason they were good in both of these games is because of the defense. The defense was absolutely locked in and playing at an elite level. Look at the Miami Heat, who, here's the first of the asterisks, is, aren't a great offensive team. They struggle with some of this, but they looked horrible, horrible against the... New Orleans Pelicans. They flustered the Heat and the Pistons. Other asterisks, that's a terrible team. But the Miami Heat all night looked like they had no game plan to what the Pelicans were doing. The Pelicans' defensive rotations and help defense were near perfect in this one, and they really limited the Miami Heat getting into the paint. And when they did, and there was a defensive rotation coming over, help defense, whatever it is, they had no answer to that. They just kicked the ball out and just chucked up a bad three-point attempt. The Miami Heat scored just 30 points in the paint in this game. Just 30. Here's the other thing with this. The Miami Heat, this is a wild number to me, had four turnovers. Just four turnovers the whole game. Just four. And they only scored 88 points. Right? The Pelicans had 12 turnovers and they scored 111. That's not how this is supposed to go. 12 is a low number for the Pels too. But just four and you can't get anything going, that's a truly incredible thing. The Miami Heat were 13 for 47 from three. That's under 30%. I couldn't do anything, right? Because the defense was limiting them. The defense was dictating the game. And that's what I think was so impressive about all of this. You also saw the Pelicans go to their zone defense a good bit. That also flustered Miami, right? When they realized that Miami couldn't shoot, they went with a zone defense and was like, we're just not going to let you inside and we're going to force you to take contested threes. They did and they couldn't make them. And that's a huge reason why the Pelicans won this game. Again, they dictated the game with defense. Same thing with the Detroit Pistons, right? They came out and just forced a ton of turnovers on the Pistons in that first quarter and just got out and ran. And when they did that, the game was basically over from the start. The Pistons had eight turnovers in the first quarter of that game. Herb Jones, right? 
had two steals. CJ had one. You had a block from Jonas, two blocks from Trey Murphy. They were just forcing turnovers and doing everything they needed to do to kind of throw the Pistons off. And it was all she wrote at that point in time. The Pistons in this one had just 36 points in the paint. That's a really low number. The Pelicans in this one had 58 against the Pistons. That's really great basketball to play that connected and it it jumps out at you watching this team look at how much communication there is look at some of these possessions where the opponent is passing the ball around trying somewhere to find (coughs) you see the sick stuff coming in trying to find an open shot and they can't because there's a pelican right there they were rotating they were running around they were flying they were forcing turnovers All of those things. It was truly incredible and impressive to see from New Orleans in this one. Their defense has been elite all season long. No matter who has started, no matter who has played. Look, this is the coaching staff and getting that buy-in. You have Brandon Ingram with his best defensive season ever in the NBA. You have Zion making an impact on that side of the ball. There's no true traditional rim protector, yet they're still in an elite defense when that's something that you don't want to give up. So they don't. They find other ways to overcome all of it. That zone defense is definitely something that's going to be a threat and a tool for them to use in the postseason as well. That's head coach Willie Green. Defense is mainly about getting guys to just buy in. Buy in and let these guys go out and compete and try hard. You get a lot of guys that don't, but this team is. That is the head coach. For all the criticism that he's had this year, the Pelicans have the sixth best record. They've improved regularly as the season's gone on. They've improved in each of his three years. You probably want to give him more credit than you already are. And that defense being elite, for years we've asked, what's the Pelicans' identity? What's the Pelicans' identity? Their identity has been right there in front of us. It's defense. This is what they want to hang their hat on and how that defense leads to easier offense. It's something we have regularly talked about at Fear and Every Day or on the show this season. You're really seeing it come into play here. This defense is great at what it does. This is a team that no one's really going to want to play in the postseason, I think, and is going to really scare a lot of these uh, opponents and things like that. So the fact that they are so good at what they are doing is on the head coach. The fact that everyone is contributing and being a plus on the defensive side of the ball, it seems like right now, that's an incredible thing. And it's why the Pelicans are just a half game out of the Clippers who lost in awful fashion, by the way, to the Um, Philadelphia 76ers. It's why the Pelicans are maybe going to get home court advantage in the first round. That's coaching leading to really good defense, leading to this team having an identity and getting them a bunch of wins. To blow out the Miami Heat like that and to fluster them like that, a well-coached team, you could easily say that Spolstra is the best coach in the NBA. For them to just like have nothing, like no answer, not knowing what to do here and to have a game like taken to them like that was genuinely shocking to see. But awesome if you're a Pelicans fan and Willie Green and the coaching staff, um, Jaron Collins kind of being their defensive coordinator for all this deserve an absolute ton of credit. So coming up next, it wasn't just the defense. There was really good offense, too. You saw them go out and score some points here. They just played smart basketball. And I'll explain what they did and why it was so effective and how it's something they can do and use to keep this team going forward in the absence of Brandon Ingram. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Where are my buttons here? Here we go. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good 
good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market. Research investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood Gold IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC registered broker dealer. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is also brought to you by eBay Motors, my favorite. I drove the Corvette over the weekend and it was running because of eBay Motors. The weather was beautiful. It was nice to get it out on the road. Oh, it ran so perfectly. It was awesome. Passion, drive, patience is what brings home the winning trophy and also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up. Whether you want speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your vehicle, it's why I I only go to eBay Motors for all of my cars that I that I work on. You're going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive over at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday. And if you're an everyday or always let me know in the comments down below. So, for your second listen today, as you know, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Lockdown Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th, so it's already underway here for the best MLB season preview, coming exclusively to Lockdown Sports Today. Go check it out, Lockdown Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Fire TV channels app. All right, let's talk about smart basketball. We like that, right? That's a good thing. This team, as I said right in the beginning of the show, is not better without Brandon Ingram. They were going to need to find a way to generate some more offense to create some more easy looks. Brandon Ingram, outside of Zion, is maybe the team's best playmaker, right? He's been in that kind of playmaking role for the past couple of weeks, and he has excelled and exceeded at all of it and been really good. You can't replace that. There's no replacing Brandon Ingram and what he can bring to this team. You can, however, generate other offense, and the Pelicans managed to really find a way against the Miami Heat. They started off slow, and then you saw some adjustments from the coaching staff that got this team going really, really well. And again, just simple, smart, easy basketball. And against the Miami Heat, it started with Jonas Valanciunas, the kind of forgotten guy for the Pelicans this season. And it wasn't just feed Jonas Valanciunas the ball and let him go to work. It was... Play through Jonas Valanciunas by drawing a double team. And when the Miami Heat didn't have Bam Adebayo out there on the court, and even when he was out there against Jonas, he wasn't really effective in this game. When Jonas was out there and he was posting up down low and sealed off his man, so got this man behind him, could catch a pass, right? The Pelicans got him the ball. And because Miami didn't have a guy who could defend him one-on-one, they immediately brought another defender over to try and double-team Jonas Valanciunas to prevent Jonas from scoring. Okay, that's fine because what the Pelicans did was great from that. All you have to do there now is when there's two men on one guy, Someone's open, right? So you toss the ball inside to JV, draw a double team. Then you kick it back out to the open player. And now all you have to do is keep moving the ball till you find the open man and you keep passing. You'll get an open shot and it's really as simple as that or it just makes it easier to attack the defense. They did that repeatedly. Now, Jonas Valanciunas has a modest stat line here. Eight points, 10 rebounds, four of four. Didn't take a ton of shots, right? But he didn't need to. And when you look at him with the starters, right, he was more effective than Zion Williamson in this one. Then Trey Murphy, who went four of nine from three in this game in terms of plus minus because they were playing through the double team as opposed to playing through Jonas Valanciunas. They're kind of using him as the vehicle to draw the double team, get that Miami Heat defense off balance and in rotation. And when that defense is rotating, defenses are much easier to beat. 
That's what really worked here for New Orleans. Now, it also helped that you had Najee Marshall and Jose Alvarado truly, incredibly step up off the bench. You know, after they were ejected from this past game, Jimmy Butler had some comments. You knew this team was going to be fired up coming into this one, but they just played smart basketball and everyone just elevated their level of play a little bit. But it's easier when you're attacking not a set defense, a defense that's rotating, that's moving, and you can find lanes to cut or to draw or use a skip pass and kind of get the ball to an open man for an open three-point shot. The Pelicans were, by the way, 18 for 36 in this one. Shooting the three ball in comparison to the just 22 they took against the Orlando Magic tells you something, right? They were able to keep up with Miami, who was trying to kind of shoot their way back into this one. So doing all that led to these open, wide open looks. The Pelicans weren't flustered. They were ready to take them. It was just a well-coached team and game by New Orleans in this one. Truly, it was, right? Get the ball to JV, get them moving. We're going to get a wide open three and oh, hey, we need to take more three. So you better take that. And it's, I think, part of the reason why you saw head coach Willie Green rely on just a basically an eight, eight man rotation. That's all he ran in this one, eight guys, until they got into garbage time and they put in some other players here. But it was a smart game plan on a night where the Miami Heat were really trying to limit Zion Williamson. The fact that they won and put up 111 points when Zion scored just four points in this is wild, right? They had, like, when you look at the stats on this one, right, just the box score here, it's like, what, what the heck happened and how did the Pelicans win? Zion had four points, no Brandon Ingram in this one. The Miami Heat had just four turnovers, but they were held to just 88 points. It was just a great game plan, smart basketball, doing the easy thing, right, is drawing a double team, then kicking it out and moving the ball around like a a revolutionary concept here? No, this is just the team being well coached on what to do to how to go out and win this game. And they did. And that's all you can ask for. This was just smart basketball leading to an easy win. And it was similar in the game against the Detroit Pistons, except this one, it was, and we'll get into Zion in a minute here. Um, He was, because he was just fantastic, but very similar in this game, right? Get the ball to JV, let them double him, let him pass out, start rotating. Get the ball to Zion Williamson in the low post area, the low block area. Someone cut because he's drawing two guys and all eyes are on Zion. So you can have a backdoor cut, other things like that. All of that ball movement is leading to some really good things for New Orleans. The ball was popping in this one. That's how they're going to win the majority of their games. And that's why they can weather this storm a little bit without Brandon Ingram. Again, there's no replacing Brandon Ingram. You'd like his shot making. You like his playmaking and the defense that he brings too. Trey Murphy can definitely struggle on the defensive side of the ball. He can struggle with some turnovers at times. He can have these bad nights. He went one for 12 against the Pistons, by the way. Somehow was still a plus 13, which is wild to think about. So you need Brain Ingram back, but this is a good way to at least keep things afloat and get you where you want to be in the postseason, which is ideally the fourth seed or at least holding on to the fifth seed. And New Orleans right now is doing a really good job of that. So this was Willie Green having these guys ready to go for this Pistons game. They came out and like took it to Detroit. This is a game that we all knew they were going to win, right? There was no concern whatsoever that they would lose this game. None of us thought that. Don't even say it. Don't even say it, right? Yet they came out and they smoked the team and they kind of kept their foot on the ass till the very end. And that's exactly what you want to see by this Pelicans team that hasn't traditionally done that. That's the head coach getting them ready for these sorts of things. This team is starting to look somewhat playoff ready right now as they are using these adjustments, these tricks that I said maybe they were holding back on because, well, they were winning games. Don't don't change what's working for you here. And now the Pelicans are looking to be like right on the heels of the Los Angeles Clippers who aren't really in a great spot. New Orleans has now won eight out of their last 10 games and it's actually better than that. It's a good team that's playing some really good basketball right now and just smart basketball, good defense. That's going to get you a lot of wins here in the NBA. So let's get into Zion a little bit because he was nearly perfect. Like I said, I think defense is the big story. I think the adjustments in the smart basketball without Brian Ingram are truly the big stories. And it's wild that that overshadows Zion Williamson going 13 of 14 for 36 points with seven rebounds and six assists and two steals. He had an incredible game against Detroit. When he's playing like this, 
Good luck, rest of the NBA. Let's talk about it. And a couple of rotation tweaks that you saw in this Detroit game, including one with Zion Williamson, that is like the best sign you could possibly think of. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about Prize Picks because Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS because it's just you versus the numbers. You pick more or less on the stat projection for two to six players, and then you watch the winnings roll in. And right now, you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. They've got squares that are marked red or green, and you get different payouts. So now you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. And prize picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. They also offer quick withdrawals, an easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players, the stat types, and it's what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's up to $100 in a first deposit match when you go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA prize picks pick more pick less it's that easy and thank you for making locked on pelicans your first listen today and every day we are here monday through friday the number one pelicans podcast breaking down everything you want to know as part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube. Become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday to Locked On Pelicans. Know what's going on with this team because we talk a lot about things that on this show that end up getting put into the games. or keeping you informed. It's a fun season. Do me a favor. Tell a friend about the show. Send them a link. This one, your favorite episode recently. Send it over. Make sure they're watching because we want to have everyone on board for this playoff run because it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, quick note on programming this week. There's probably going to be a bonus show at some point and maybe uh, one or two other things. Uh, I'm on locked on NBA. I do it on Wednesdays. That's our national show. It's Monday through Friday and it's rotating hosts. I have the, the Wednesday episode alongside John Corrales of locked on Celtics. We've become really good friends. Uh, I've had people ask like, are the locked on guys like actually close in real life? Ross Jackson, host of locked on saints. Make that your second listen today. Hang out regularly. He's, an, he's like the nicest person in the world. John Grouse of Locked On Celtics, just from him and I co-hosting an episode a week of Locked On NBA, become re- really close, to be perfectly honest. He also loves New Orleans, so whenever the Celtics come play in New Orleans, he comes down for the game. So we'll likely do a live show from the arena after that game in some capacity. We'll probably do a, a bonus preview show or something like that as well for the game. Um, or maybe it'll just be a regular episode where we're just going to do it in person because that's a lot of fun. So we'll be at the arena at the game this weekend. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know. We'll have some extra stuff for you this week on Lockdown Pelicans because one of my good friends from the Lockdown Podcast Network is going to be here. It's me, him, Ross are all going to hang out. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Uh, and also, hold on, maybe maybe it's a finals preview. I probably just jinxed everything with that. I don't know what I'm saying. Ignore me here. So let's talk about Zion Williamson being near perfect in this game. 13 of 14. That's not, let's round up. That's 93%. It's 92.9%. 93%. He got to the line 14 times. That's a lot. 10 of 14. 71% is not bad from there. Seven rebounds, six assists, two steals, just four turnovers with that high of a usage rate, and 36 points. 36 points on 14 shot attempts is insane, right? We talk about that a lot. That's something that I find really important in terms of efficiency. If you score 1.25, 1.3 points per game, you're a really efficient and good player. 1.5 puts you in like elite levels, right? Zion in this game scored 2.57 points per shot attempt. Now, that's usually helped. That number's usually helped by three-point shooting. It's worth an extra point, right? So that's going to help you get better efficiency than a two. You know, it's also helped by free throws. So 10 points here added into that total that weren't those field goal attempts. Otherwise, he had 26 points on 14 shot attempts, which also is still pretty good. So these are really good numbers here from Zion. That's 1.86, as we'll, we'll call it, if you take out the free throws. Still really good. When he's playing like this, y'all, he, he looks like a different player, right? Duke Zion, Pelican Zion, a better version of that, whatever you want to call it. He looks really good right now. 
the biggest thing for me this game is not the 13 of 14. Not the not the 10 for four, not the 14 free throw attempts, not the seven rebounds, not the six assists. It's something that happened in the first quarter. And that was Zion played basically the entirety of the first quarter. His normal rotation and the substitution pattern by Willie Green is you pull him with about six minutes left to go. He takes about a three minute rest and then they sub him back in right around three minutes left to go in the first quarter. So he plays about nine minutes in that quarter. He played the entirety of the first and basically the entirety of the third quarter too. This was a game where they knew they needed him and he went out and just did it, right? That's a truly impressive thing. You want to talk about his conditioning and things like that to go and just play a whole quarter. That's not what we normally see from him here. So the fact that he did it and is capable of doing that says a lot about his conditioning and where he is with his level of play right now. That is something we should be really excited about. You know, you're going to have to play more minutes in the postseason, and he seems ready to do that. And when you are just finishing like he is, the ups are there. That that burst off of a basketball move when he starts his drive to the basket and all of the things, it's nearly impossible to stop. Now, the Pistons are just... Awful, right? Horrible, horrible team. Still, no one's capable of stopping him like this at all right now. That was a truly impressive like display from him, I thought. And I was really excited to see that from, from him and to see him just playing like that and dominating the game. That's exactly what we wanted to see in this one. And he did it, right? That's leading the team. He needs to step up a little bit while Brandon Ingram is out. There's more on his shoulders and he seems up to the challenge. And so as we wait for basically a week, two weeks now, sorry, two weeks, week and a half, two weeks to get an update on Brandon Ingram, we probably feel a little bit better about it right now because of the level of play from Zion Williamson and exactly what he's doing. This is a really overall encouraging sign and something that should make you as a Pelicans fan really happy and scare the rest of the league. The fact that he just played all those quarters, that's bigger than any of the other numbers to me. We know what he's capable of doing. We knew Detroit couldn't stop him. It's the other things that make this truly impressive. Also of note, in the game against the Pistons in the first half, you see this on occasion. Willie Green wants to run his guys, right? And right now with B.I. out, Dyson Daniels out, that's an eight-man rotation. Trey Murphy, Zion, Jonas, C.J., Herb Jones, Larry Nance Jr., Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado, right? That's the rotation. It's B.I. when he's there too, and it's nine. Right now, sorry, it's eight. He did get Jordan Hawkins a six-minute run in the first half just to give guys like CJ a little bit of a spell. Didn't give him any run in the second half. I wouldn't be shocked if they do that going forward. It gets Hawkins a couple of minutes, gets him out there on the court in a couple of reps, keeps the guys a little bit fresh where you can then kind of like lock down a little bit more in the second half. I think that's a good, good thing. I'm less worried about his minutes because I want to see this team win and get the fourth seed and keep or at least keep their spot as the fifth seed and not drop to six. I think that's important. So I'm cool with him not getting tons of minutes. But if you can find a way to do it properly in your rotation, I find that to be a very good thing here. And I definitely think that head coach Willie Green has kind of maybe found the right balance with it. We'll see on Tuesday against the Oklahoma City Thunder. But it was a great weekend for New Orleans. As I said, Zion being near perfect isn't the lead story to me. It was how good their defense is and how they were dictating games here. And I look forward to seeing them do more of that as we hit this final stretch run of the season. The regular season is almost over. Playoffs are going to be here before we know it. So make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Pelicans, where we get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. And as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with y'all tomorrow. And we'll get set for these upcoming slate of games. We've got more to talk about too. So fun time here to be a Pelicans fan. And I'll see y'all next time.